Hey, Johnny Cage represent El Paso, Texas, the Dirty South. Make sure you guys check him out, man. Add DJ Johnny Cage with a K, not a C. Let's get in the mix. My name is Big Side Puro Party. Let's go, Johnny. Let's get it. My hair is turning gray.
mix Puro party slow down that hot fire hello guys and welcome to gears of war roster mania i want to thank you guys for all being here tonight i know we just had that esports gears all access episode tonight and i'm sure you guys watched it i'm sure you guys heard all the good stuff about the coaches a uh, big shout out to fatal strike tonight putting on a big display on that show now if fatal strike hasn't set the bar way way up there he has tonight and you guys all saw that so, without further ado, guys, we're going to have a lot to talk about. I'm also going to be having a special guest tonight. We're going to be having Jay Beans himself, a.k.a. Juju Beans, uh, on here as a special guest tonight. He'll be talking through all these topic lines with me if he decides to or not, but I just wanted to get that out there. We also have first topic of the day is Soto's new team. Who's the fifth? It's not who you think it is. I promise you that. This was actually brought to me today, per sources as usual, by... Somebody I almost slipped there by somebody who confirmed their fifth and like I said, it's not who you think it is I can tell you it's not God plays then we're gonna be talking about domes TV And I put his Twitter on there shout out to domes as well He actually made me a thumbnail for last week's episode that I actually have to post up on YouTube for everybody Which was one of the juiciest episodes I've had so far in regards to IC being the replacement for God plays etc etc so I'll have that up on YouTube tonight and uh, we're gonna be talking about domes I think domes has finally found a roster that he is comfortable with it is a roster filled with people that have played together before in the past I think it can work I think it's a good team and I actually hope these guys stick it out they could probably be I would say a top eight seeded team if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong or it could be right not too sure but they will be on there uh, we'll be talking about them tonight followed by God Place. now I actually contacted God Place today I spoke to him on the phone and he really didn't have much to say kind of sounded like he was pretty busy I know he's been upstate uh, right now with family and he's you know, probably hasn't been as devoted as he usually is or dedicated, if you want to say that. So he'll, he gave me some comments to bring up. And uh, he's also a free agent. Like I said, he's going to be replaced by Icy. Now, one of the questions that was brought up to me by a lot of people was Icy is a pro player. Sorry, I, I talked, I talk about these guys like you guys all know. Most people know who he is. But Icy and God Plays are both pro players. God Plays was on Echo Fox, which happens to be a top three professional organization here in the East sports gears world and i see is now replacing god plays on that roster which leaves god plays as a free agent nobody knows what he's currently doing uh, i did speak with him like i said there wasn't much there i just know kaid aka god plays just isn't at the place he needs to be right now uh, to dedicate as much time and be on a team you know he's kind of all over the place right now i love k as much as 
you know, he's in turmoil or whatever you want to call it. But a question that was brought up to me was, is Icy really going to be a better replacement? Is Icy going to be the player that they need, that they were apparently looking for in God plays, but obviously they dropped them with, without, a, without even a, a, a thought. It kind of just happened. They kind of got rid of God plays and brought in Icy. Now, Icy, obviously, he's a proven champion. He's been there, done that, and... Let's see. I want to. I want to talk to you guys about it, and I also want to talk to Juju and just kind of see where he's at. And then, lastly, we're going to be talking about the last thing on the board. I really don't want to bring it up right now, but you guys can all read that. I call a timeout, and I think it's a timeout that's been waiting for a good bit. And uh, I'm going to be talking about this live tonight, and it's also going to be up on YouTube tonight, just to kind of get my point out there sooner than later. So let me take these shades off, get a little bit more serious. Like I said, guys, I have a guest tonight, Juju Beans, great player. I've actually scrimmed with Juju before. He's been in the community. He has a loud mouth in a good way, obviously. The guy talks up for himself. He's raw. He's real. He's going to be on tonight. He's going to be talking with me live. And uh, without further ado, guys, let me go ahead and get Juju in here. I always do live calls with my guest, and Juju should be ready, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead and call Juju. Paranormal, I will be bringing that up. Promise you I will be bringing it up. I don't think anybody expects it. Expects what I'm going to be bringing up later. Juju. What's up, bro? What's up? How's it going? Chilling, man. Uh, you don't have video, I'm assuming? Give me one second. I'm trying to start my camera up. Cool. There we go. Hmm. Him up. It should be up. Cause I got my app open. Mm. <laughs> Bet Hello. You. Yo. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to try to start my camera. No I'm here doing an audio call. I'm, I'm going to let you know when I started up, when this app update. All right, cool. So, guys, this is Juju Beans. He's going to be my special guest of the night. As you guys all know, if you don't already know, Juju is a player. He's been around for a good bit. Like I said, Juju is raw. Juju is real. I wanted to bring Juju here tonight to help me talk through these topics with you guys. Uh, I know we've had some guests. I know we've had some special you know, co-hosts, whatever it is. Um, and a lot of them didn't pan out because a lot of them didn't really, you know, fit the role as, you know, as well. And I know Juju talks a lot and Juju and I, like I said, we scrimmed before. Juju, surprisingly, it shocked me when I scrimmed with him. You know, he talks a lot. He communicates, which is a big thing in Gears of War, especially in esports. So I thought it was a good combo to have here tonight. So Juju, before we continue, uh, just give a little bit about yourself. I mean, you introduce yourself. You're the man of the hour tonight. Uh, all right. Well, uh, everybody know me as Juju, but... Uh... Majority of people that know me from back home. My real name is Julian, for those that don't know. I love Gears of War. Um, I've been playing since I was 15. Um, I'm from the Chicagoland area. You can say Chicago. Um, I really, really, really love this game. Everything about it. The people, the community, the energy, the the rawness of it, the the trash talk. Everything about it is, is amazing. If you haven't competed or ever played at a high level, I recommend anybody that want to get into something that's more action paced. Gears is the way to go, definitely. Absolutely, and I think everybody can agree with that. That knows Gears and knows esports so far. I think Gears of War probably brings a lot more excitement, a lot more trash talk than probably most games currently. If not, you know, for here on out, I'm not too sure Fortnite will necessarily get to our level. Um, so I definitely have to agree with that. So jumping into the first topic of the night, guys, like I said, we're going to be talking about Soto's new team. Now, 
we make such a big deal about Soto because obviously Juju, like you and I both know, Soto's won an event before. You know, he played with Team Envious, he played with Echo. You know, the fran- he played with Franchise Ribs, all those big time guys. And now it seems like he's finally found a set roster, and it's part of the roster is also players that he's been playing with for a while. Uh, I think I told you, if not. You know, Soto has been seen playing with Toy Soldier, which is, again, another former teammate of his own that was released from Echo Fox. Then you have Pell and DeFazio, which happen to both be players that Soto's actually, I think, played at one event or two events as it is already. So you do have that, you know, three-player alignment that they have with Pell and DeFazio, and now you add Toy Soldier, which obviously, again, another champion in this game. And then lastly, the one thing that I want to bring up to everybody tonight, because nobody came to my attention or brought to my attention that they knew who the fifth was. Usually I'll get DMs or I'll get messages before I go live saying, oh, I already know. Um, but the fifth player of that roster currently happens to be Enforce, which is Terrence KTA on Twitter. And, I mean, Juju, I'll let you go teacher. first. I, uh, I'm i sure you know more about him. Yeah, but I know, what's your I know call more on that? about him, um, I met, I've been playing against TJ for a little, for a little while. Uh, actually, it's crazy. I think him and his team beat me for the last minute tourney for UE for Columbus for the qualifier. And they, you know, they were they were too young to participate, so they had to automatically forfeit. But uh, I met him last year in Vegas, and I uh, watched him play. And I knew he was nice in UE, but I didn't know that he was really good at four. And then um, come to think of it, I actually we played a wager the other day. He was doing some really nutty things. I can give him that. He he, de- he definitely has some skill. Um, he's smarter than a lot of players at his age. That's the thing. The, the the age gap that he has. He's he's that prime age, sixteen, seventeen around there. That he's just everything to him is so fast and so fun. That's one thing that a lot of the younger players uh, have that uh, older players don't have. They have more fun on the game than we do, and I think that's what makes them a lot more successful in certain instances because they just love to play. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not about winning to lose; it's just loving to play. And when you do something for so long, it's just it's second nature. So it's just it's good to see. It definitely is. Yeah, and I, I agree with you on that. I, I mean, that's usually what I tell most people that come on here on the show is that yeah, I, I can agree with that. These guys have fun; they actually enjoy playing the game. You know, it is practice, and it is you know, I guess you could say a career or soon to be career. If not, you know, for certain teams, it already is. But uh, you have to be able to enjoy it. I feel like you get a better outcome from it, especially from the younger guys. If you have fun, yeah, you know, you take it serious. You have your scrims. You know, you've been there. I've been there. Um, but I really like the fact that you said, he, you know, he's young. He's 15, 16. This kid is hungry. He obviously has been playing for a little bit. Not crazy, but he's been playing for a little bit. And now he might very possibly get the chance that – you know, maybe some people can say he deserves or maybe just a chance to actually show what he can bring to the table. Um, in regards to that whole roster as a whole, you know, what do you think about it going forward? Uh, going forward, I feel like uh, they can actually make some noise. Uh, one person that uh, I really like, I liked watching uh, DeFazio play at this past Vegas. Um, he was expected to not as do as well due to the fact of, uh, I guess you can say, he don't have as much clout as other players because, like, he stays in his lane. Everybody has their own group of friends. But um, he used to play with my boy, um, Fnatic, and they were like a duo. Mm, and, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard to always distinguish players when you play in a duo so much. Either one of you are known as the duo or the other. You know what I mean? And uh, it's, it was good to see him actually compete. You know, him, Sam, um, has a, it was it was really nice seeing them. Uh, they may not have got the outcome they wanted, but, you know, everything is a learning experience. Uh, I really feel like DeFazio is a, a good piece for their team. Also, Soto, too, and Toy. I just really love Toy because he's a, he's, a, he's a slaying animal. You know, mm-hmm. no riding. You know, some people in the chat may say I'm riding, but you got to be mm-hmm. honest. It's, it's a difference compared to when you're watching it. You know, online, as in compared to when you sit there live and you watch, you actually watch the plays are being played, or you know, you see it is it, played from a different way. And also, when you're a competitor, you look at it different too, because you know, apparently he's winning, he's doing something right. Apparently, I'm not, because <laughs> due to what I'm, <laughs> but you know what I mean. But that's just the honesty of it, you know. So, it's no, good it's true. See. But it's true. I agree with you on that. Uh, I do like DeFazio on that team, or DeFazio pretty much on any team. I mean, the guy is an in-game leader, and it's 
you know, you don't see that as often anymore. And just alone with the, the age that he's at, you know, I know I'm pretty sure he's under 21, if not 21. Yeah, um, about, say about 19, 20. Yeah, about 19, right? Yeah. So, you know, that's that comes – that doesn't come naturally usually especially at that age and the fact that you're always hearing this guy scream you're here you're telling him where his players to go i mean and he's playing with soto i mean like i said soto is a champion and i've heard defazio tell him hey go here go there because in the end on the battlefield it doesn't matter you just want to win you know you tell your teammates what to do regardless uh me personally with this roster i like him especially with the addition with terrence i like these guys who come out of nowhere you know i guess you could say powers is kind of the same deal with echo even though powers you know we kind of hear about him a little bit more he's a little bit more mainstream than terrence is but i have heard of terrence before i have seen him all over twitter i've seen him on xbox and uh, it's always interesting to see somebody like him like somebody like terrence you know you get thrown on a team like this you know it's not necessarily optic it's not ghost gaming but you do have two previous envious slash echo fox guys on here that you know can pretty much compete with the best at this point so I do like to see this addition to the team, and I want Soto to succeed. I, you know, I love that team. Soto's a, a New York native, so you always, I always gotta, you know. Yeah, Soto, my them. guy, man. You wanna hear it, Jim? Uh, let's see. My first Gears of War event, his um, for Gears of War three, our first event. NJ Halo, we we're playing on Clock Tower. Three three. No, take it back. Two two. Soto picks nades up, and I'm at back pillar, and he throws nades and kills me. He did it one round, and then he did it again. And then you, you want to hear some also that's funny about that. <laughs> right right before we lost, like that game, like leading into the match, he locks the keys in a car with everybody's oh, stuff. Oh, boy. Everybody's stuff in it, like shoes and, and bags and, and everything because you know, everybody was leaving. And I'm like, bro, right before our match is about to start, and he was like, ah, I just don't. I don't know, bro. I was like, all right, we're going to play. Then we're going to worry about it later. <laughs> it, was just, it was just so crazy. That's yeah. a horrible feeling. But you got to continue. Like you said, you got to continue playing. I mean, oh, definitely, though. It is what it is. So the one question I want to ask before we move forward about this is being that you know Terrence, obviously, which is great. I didn't know that you knew Terrence that well. And that you know Soto, obviously, and most of these guys on the team. Realistically, when all is said and done, at – New Orleans coming up in July. Where do you see this roster as it stands placing at New Orleans coming up in July? Mm, let's see. I see some of the teams that I like to see that that I want to do uh, that want to do well. Because you know you can't just give someone just just based off roster um, an automatic placing because you know anything's possible. I go off based off potential. You know from actually seeing it. So. Um, I give them, I want to say, they could do top six. Well, I can definitely give them top six right now. Yeah. As of right now, yeah, top six or even top four, for a fact. Because with the addition of Toy, he he just has the experience. He has the the, the him and Soto. Him and Soto definitely have the most experience, and it just it's they need to integrate that experience and share that with the players in order for them to be even greater than what they are because the skill is already there. It's not about the skill no more. It, anybody can hit shots. Jim Bob, 54, can be the best. He can stand there and L, LT somebody. Let's be honest. But, <laughs> I like how you said Jim Bob, who's actually uh, a player. No, shout out to Jim Bob. Bro. Shout out to Jim Bob because I met him at Vegas. I definitely did meet him at Vegas. He walked to him and said, I said, yeah, what's up, bro? He said, so I'm Jim Bob. You, you, you're making fun of me? I said, I, I said, bro, it's, it's not even like that. You know, Jim Bob was just like some random guy. He was like, I know, I know. And it was actually kind of dope to meet him. I never thought it was going to be a real player named Jim Bob, too. That's the funny part. <laughs> That's why I started laughing. I'm like, wait, there's actually a Jim Bob, especially in Gears. And he is pretty funny. I know he gets, like, really offended when you talk trash about him. But like you said, it's not even about that, which is great. Um, so... You're if saying was, top four. That's what that's what you're going with. I give them top four right now. If if they work from now until then, as far as scrimming and playing and taking it serious, I'll give them top four. But I, I I'm only going out based off prediction. So we'll see when the time comes. Of course, of course, and like you said, I mean, you you know it. A anything can happen. Realistically, you come down to the end of it. I mean, these guys could be a top thirty-two team. These guys can win the event. So realistically, we could say what we want. Me personally. I'm, I give these guys a comfortable top 12 and comfortable meaning, you know, that's mm. like a definite top 12. 
uh, only due to the fact that there really isn't many teams currently that I see that can fit into that top 12 category. And top eight, it, you know, definitely it's just you have a lot of question marks. It's, as much as I like bringing in the new guys, you have Terrence. Uh, I think he's – has he played at a major event, uh, Juju? Terrence? Yeah, he played, at, he played at Vegas last year. Not this summer, okay. but last summer. Okay, that's so my better. that's first event. That that ends that. So that's that's a good thing. Um, and guys like that can either really make or break your team. I'm not really too worried about the four other guys. Like you said, Toy's been there. Soto's obviously been there. We know that. DeFazio, that kid doesn't crack under pressure for anything. Pell, same thing. The guy kind of just stays quiet, puts his hoodie over his head, and kind of just goes to goes ham. <laughs> Um, so definitely does. Pale's a sleeper. That's the that's the mm-hmm. guy you gotta watch. He's the guy that he's the guy that's gonna make the play. As we say uh, where I'm from, he's the shooter. Uh, mm-hmm. If we need something done, he's gonna he's gonna go get it done. He'll sacrifice his life. He'll go get the power weapon, and exchange it. I've seen him do it. Like he's just that type of player. Most players don't have that. That is actually quite good to have that you sacrifice your life for a teammate. It's that's true. real trust. That's real trust for real. Because I've done it plenty of times. Like, take the boom. If I get killed, I get killed. Don't worry about it. And I have been there to, to see that, which is great. You're kind of the fearless guy who kind of does that for a squad. And like you said, you got to have somebody like that. And Pell is that guy. Was... Pell is that guy. That's He's quiet, too. That's the scary thing. My mom, my mom always said you got to watch the quiet people in the room. Them, <laughs> them, them, them the ones, they, they, might be, they might be quiet, but I guarantee you they might work the hardest and they're the smartest. I guarantee you. They true. don't have too much to say. They just want their work to show for what they're doing. That's the best part about it. That I can agree with. I do agree with that. Uh, so I think that's all we have, guys, for everyone that's just joining in. We were just talking about Soto's new team. Like we said, it's Pell, DeFazio, um, Toy Soldier, and now also Terrence, a.k.a. Enforce is what I was told, Terrence KTA on Twitter. Uh, that is the roster. I don't think they have an org currently, so any orgs that are watching this, uh, this is a team that you definitely want to hit up in regards to picking up a team going into New Orleans, which is coming up, guys. If you don't know, July 13th to the 15th, you know, start practicing, start picking up your teams. Uh, I know I've had some orcs contact me in general. Guys, this is a team that you definitely want to see play, and you definitely want to pick up going into this next event. Going into the second topic, this is funny. It's, a, again, another team, another roster that's been brought to my attention, as well as another team that is currently orgless as well. So, again, any orgs watching this, these are two rosters that you definitely want to contact due to the fact that, one, of course, they're a pretty good team, and, two, they're also going to be, I think, definitely a top uh, 12, top an eight seeded team. I'm pretty sure both these squads are, or at least Domes is. And uh, Juju, I know I didn't think, I don't think I brought up the uh, roster to you in regards to Domes's team, but Domes is currently playing with for everybody that doesn't know. And almost positive this is a set roster. Uh, obviously, anything can change. And it hasn't been for sure confirmed, only due to the fact that. We all know how Gears is. We all know how esports is. We all kind of flip flop in between teammates, especially before an event. But currently, the roster that has been brought to my attention is Domes, ne- Neglectant, Strafey, Fragout, and Xenon. Now, that's the five that I've been given. Obviously, these are all proven players. These are all guys that have obviously placed top eight before. Now, before I give my, I guess, idea about this team, Juju, what's your opinion on this current roster as you see it now? Um, the biggest biggest impact on this team that I like, I definitely have to say, uh, my boy Frag out and Strafey. Strafey's an, uh, another quiet player, but he's very skilled. Like, uh, if I'm not correct, I think he played a lot of one v spots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Frag out is is nice with the snipe. If if we had to put top five players, it'd be in my top five. Just from seeing what he's done, what he's done to me with the snipe and other players, like he's nice with the snipe. I give him that. Um, Domes, I don't know what to say. Like uh, <laughs> Domes is crazy. That's my boy. Chris is something else. Uh, he's just uh, he's just one of those energetic players. Like I feel like he wants to win so bad, but at times it's it's more so of a, um, I don't think he has great camaraderie. If that makes sense. At times, like a. Uh, his personality will overwhelm his gameplay, and mm-hmm. it it it'll it dumb him down. I feel like uh sometimes he he get caught in the mix on who he's playing instead of worried about the game, and uh, 
I hate hearing players say uh, it's a lot of I should have should have or would have. I hate hearing that. And I've, I've heard him say it to me before, and I told him he's a winner. And I feel like he needs the right people around him in order to win because uh, he has the, the lone wolf syndrome that I had in Gal 3. Too much, he has so much skill and potential. But it's, he's a great teammate, but he's not that big. He's not the better teammate that that you need, if that makes sense, or that no, you does. want. I agree. Like uh, he needs to he needs to get there. Like uh, it, for instance, like uh, I took a break from playing and came back, and uh, had other players tell me what I did wrong. I feel like his constructive criticism is is all the way on top, <laughs> but due to certain factors of him playing his own game and analyzing himself so much that he gets clouded when someone else's you know uh judgment comes in or a pen comes in that it's oh i could i could take it and run with it and then just leave it alone if that makes sense and continue to do me and i feel like that's why he's stuck in the place he's in now if somebody on his team can step step up and be a leader for them and guide them in the right direction i feel like they could be great because they got good players with them and xenon too xenon came up i came up playing with him and got four in this game so it's like hey i've seen him do well i know you're a good player people sleep on him too he's another sleeper mm-hmm. uh, Really is, but I feel like they can do well as a whole. I just, I just want to see them do great. It's a lot of players I feel like that are talented. It's just small things that just hold them back. Seriously, or they worried about the wrong things or the wrong people at the wrong time. Nice. But hey, what do I? <laughs> I just watch. You know a lot, Juju. That's why I brought you on here. Yeah, I, I hang around a lot of these players. Like a lot of these people, they feel like a. Uh, these guys are like celebrities. These everyday guys to me, like mm. some a little funny, some a little weird, but that's why I like them. Everybody's different. <laughs> that's the true. that's the thing about that's the thing about the gears community. That's the best part. Everybody's different. You could be from like I know somebody from like Utah. Who knows anybody from Utah? I don't. I tell you that exactly. Like like you see what I'm saying? But he randomly played gears. He competed, but he stopped. But it's like you're from Utah. I never think I'll meet somebody from Utah. Like. Like, like what goes on out there? Do they make like a specific food? Is there like anything special? The Jazz aren't that great, so it's like, what else can I say? You don't have a football team, so that's true. Well, in regards the- to Domes' team, I had to agree with you because I did compete with Domes last season. Uh, I played with him, like you. You were pretty spot on about Chris, aka Domes. For everybody that doesn't know, that's Chris. Um, he is a great teammate. Uh, he will kind of go out on his own and do his, his own thing, which was probably my main issue when I teamed with Chris. Uh, he did have the skill, but uh, he 100% was a make-or-break player for our team uh, due to the fact that he'll go really big. You know, this kid literally would get four kills. Uh, I'm almost positive uh, we played Splice, and uh, he got four kills on their home hill to pretty much save us because after that he capped their home hill. We were about to get trip capped. Um, but then you have plays where... You know, he just die. You know, we're 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 up a man four to three, three to two, whatever you want to call it, and Chris would just push in there and die, and you know, then we get the reverse trip cap on us. So I love where Chris is at. He has a lot of potential. He has a, a great communication. That's one thing about Chris that I love. Not even to pinpoint him out of that whole roster. It's just I know him better oh, than the rest great of them. communication. Yeah. It's a communication, and you know, Juju, how communication is. I mean, communication takes you a long way, and this kid can talk. Like, he will he not stop talk. talking. Uh, how much of somebody that did used to compared to now? It's like, I see it. Definitely, he can definitely talk. He's definitely a great communicator. And Chris, if you're watching, let me let you, let me tell you this, because <laughs> this is real. This is coming from the heart, from bro to bro. I want to see you win, bro. I want to see you do great, bro. Whatever it, whatever it is you got to do, let it go, bro. I'm I'm re- like seriously, let it go, and just do your thing. Sometimes you just gotta block everybody out. Sometimes you have to be a, a soldier instead of a chief. But true, no lie. In certain situations, you gotta drop the ego. I, I've learned that from playing sports. Can't be a chief all your life. I Can't agree be. With that. So, at one point in time, everybody was a soldier before they became a chief. I'm just saying. So I mean, hey, take it how you want it. But this is me telling you, raw bro. I want to see you win. So, how about this? I said on the stream. Right now, if you prove me wrong and you, you do better than, than the prediction that I give you, I give you $50. <laughs> that's that's my boy it. for a fact. That, that's how much faith I got in him. I had so much faith. I asked Speedy. I, I bet $150 on Speedy at Vegas that they was going to win. I promised to God at the taco truck I did, and they won. And he was like, bro, why you bet on me? I said, because I, I want to see you win. But I mean, hey, 
I might have the luck. I might not. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 150. I would have been like, uh. that was a brave bet. But hey, they won. So obviously you're 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 in the green. You're good. You're set. Um, but yeah, forget about Chris. I don't want to. Chris is a great player. Obviously, like we both said, Chris is great. Uh, going into it even further, frag out. Definitely one of the top power power weapon players That's I've cool. seen. Okay. Um, in this game so far. I mean, he still is as much as he's been out an event, back an event, out an event. Uh, his bull talk is insane. Uh, it's nice. When he has marks it. Marks are ridiculous. The marks are, yes. That, I've personally seen him and gone against I, him. Wow. The kid doesn't I miss a shot. When, I forgot when, but it was him. They play Optic, and it was him against Explosives with the marks. Uh, that was pretty interesting to see. Because they both really nice with it. Like, really, really nice. This is when, before they, they took the headshots away mm-hmm. and then brought it mm-hmm. back with the update. So this is when the marks of was re- the, the two-shot headshot. Like, Yeah, that stuff is scary. That th- that weapon is no joke. The, the ball talk's scary right now. You can one-shot down somebody. That needs to be fixed. I'm that's, sorry. That's wild. Especially with somebody like that. I mean, it just make the game not fun for me, at least, if I was going up uh-huh. against that. Imagine running in a bowl, running in somewhere, trying to pick up a power weapon, and you get one shot down with a bow tie. Forget about that. You... <laughs> Seriously. That'd be crazy. Oh, man. The controllers are broken because of gears. I love it. <laughs> now, I know. All right. So I brought up Frag Out. I brought up Domes. Then we also have Pedro Zenon. Uh, I think he's a monster. I think, honestly, he's probably one of our most underrated gears players. Uh, he's not That's very talkative. Paid. Hence why I think he's underrated because, you know, obviously you have those guys who are quiet. They're kind of humble. That's Pedro for you. I think he's yep. a beast. I love him on that team. Strafey, like you said, Juju, he's a 1v1 player, and he's one of the best damn 1v1 players. I've personally gone up to him a lot. I've competed against him a lot. I don't know why for some reason. just happens to be that I've played Strafey pretty much, I think, every event last season. And Strafey is really good. He's very predictable, just like most people can be at times, but he's a very skilled player um and then you have neglectant i know neglectant the one thing about him i can say and it's not even an insult is that he's not necessarily the best player but to reverse that he is extremely confident and i think confidence over skill takes you a longer way especially in a tournament when you're playing for money because if you have more confidence than the person that's sitting across from your table you're going to win because not only are you playing for money, but you're playing with confidence. And that guy across the table may not necessarily be confident in himself right at that moment. And I know Neglectant never falls under pressure. So I like that matchup altogether. My only issue, and you brought it up, Juju, was leadership. I mean, I don't, I can't even tell you who would who would lead. I guess Domes. Um, but like you said, I don't necessarily know if he's that leadership type of player. Um, I know he tries to, and I know he can fit that role if he needs to, and he may already, uh, but I don't necessarily know if that's what they need or if that's what they currently do. Uh, if it's not him, I guess Strafey, you know, like I, I don't even I don't even know too much. Somebody has to step up and do it. Somebody mm-hmm. has to has to be it. It's gonna take the right situation for them to find out who they who the leader is to make the better calls. Agreed, and that's. Pretty much the easiest way to put it. I mean, there's really not much else to say about that. Um, so I think that's it for that board, for that topic board. Uh, we're going to go to the next one. God Plays is a free agent. Obviously, we all know. I told you guys, I literally spoke to God Plays earlier today. Uh, he seemed a little busy, a little distracted. I'm not too sure if that's been keeping him from gears. It might possibly be that, that that's the case currently. And maybe that took a little bit of effect into the decision for Echo Fox. Um which is sad. You know, I love God Plays. I literally teamed with him, literally did everything for this kid in regards to events to get him there to help him. And, uh, you know, it stinks to see him get on a team like Uncle Fox and then be dropped, not just for anybody, yeah. but for Icy. You know, I mean, Icy mm. is a good replacement. Uh, but what's your take on that, Juju? What did you think about the whole adding God Plays and dropping him, you know, pretty much right after for Icy? Well, one thing I can say about uh, being in the business is that, uh, it is business, for one. We're going to throw that out there. So we, we won't say that isn't a factor in this. But um, two, I think it's kind of crazy because it's like um, Echo Fox is a big org, you know? And um, they have a, a strong line of champions that run through their org. 
as far as like expectations for players and how well they do and things like that. They breed some good players over there in every esport. And I felt like uh, that was a good fit for God plays coming back after, you know, his situation that he had last season with the whole, uh, you know, him getting suspended and the fight and all that. I mean, that's small and it's done in the past, but I felt like this was something refreshing, something uh, new. This was a good look for him, a chance to um, put himself back on the platform to redeem himself, to show that he still has what it takes to compete with the best and that um, it wouldn't really be an issue. You know, and I just feel like it's wild because you pick him up and then it's like, what situation can I say? It's like a, it's like you getting a, a D in the class. You need to see the pass. <laughs> that makes sense. It's like, oh, oh, OK, this is refreshing. I got to see I pass, you know, but then you get the final grade. It's a D. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's not good enough. And then they, they just you got to retake the class now because you needed to see. You know what I mean? And that class was him being on Echo Fox like. Hey, I'm in a class and I'm I'm doing good. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm confident, and then boom, it just gets taken away like that fast. And it's like, wow. But you said this class. Yeah, it is sad. I can definitely say that because uh, who knows what time that he put into the into thinking and making moves outside of the game as far as saying like uh, I'm on Echo Fox now. You know, you know, you tell your family and friends and things like that. And then you get a, a frightening email stating that you've been dropped. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, it is. It's a part of the business, though. It'll definitely make or break you. And I feel like uh, you just got to hold his uh, head high, you know? That's all this he can business do. This business is ruthless. All he can do and keep shooting, man. Never stop shooting. Let Anybody out there listening? <laughs> amateur, pro, it don't matter. Never stop shooting, man. Don't ever let nobody else tell you you can't be great, for real. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of players out there that don't, that don't believe in themselves that they don't have what it takes to be great when everybody's human. Which is a problem. Is a problem. You yeah, gotta have yeah. you gotta have some self confidence. That's why I brought up that whole thing about neglecting. You gotta be a confident player. That's that's just fact. I mean, I could even say that for myself. That's why I was laughing. I may not have been the the most skilled player, but I'll tell you one damn thing. And my teammates or Immortal Spawn, you know, you 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 know Immortal. He could tell you I was probably one of the most cockiest, confident SOBs in Gears of War <laughs> since day one. Since I was fifteen, I was yelling at pro players, telling them I was better than them. And you know what? It worked because you got to be confident. I wasn't necessarily the best. I could say that with confidence. But uh, it's true, you know. You got to have some confidence, and I think, uh, you know, God plays especially after a move like this. It, it's rough. It's rough to, you know, to bounce back, and uh, that's kind of what I got. Like I said before, you even brought all that, and that's kind of matches when I spoke to him. It's that, you know, he doesn't really sound too, too, I guess, confident in the whole situation. You know, like where does he go from here? And uh, that was one of the questions I wanted to talk about. Besides, you know. Was Icy a better replacement? And I guess we'll talk about that first. Uh, God plays an Icy, obviously both very similar players. I think God plays a little bit more faster than him in regards to gameplay. Um, better overall player, I definitely think Icy has it. I think he's a better skilled player. I think he's a lot smarter than a God plays. I've played with God plays. I love him to death. He's a great like. Just he's pretty much an animal. Just let him loose. Tell him what to do. He'll yeah, do it. Tell him to do it. He'll do it. Yeah, you need people like that. I see is that player, but definitely. it's it's harder to control him. I think I see. I think we could both agree. I see. Obviously, he's won championships as it is, and I see is a better overall player. Uh, so I personally think it was a better replacement for Echo Fox Juju. I don't know if you feel the same. I feel it. I think it was. I think that was a great pickup for them. They said they want to bring something fresh. They said they want to bring something different, even though it may have come from one champion team to another. I guess you can say in that aspect. Um, I feel like. They needed that as as an incomplete roster. Who it is now is Icy, Powers, um, Fran, and uh, Kyle. And Kyle. Yeah, which is that? I mean, that's a good squad right there. You add Icy and Kenny, both literally former teammates yeah. on Optic, mm -hmm. and then you add Powers, which Powers can be. Right now, obviously, and everyone says it, your weakest link only due to the fact that he's young and, you know, he hasn't necessarily competed at a major event. So you could say he's your weakest link, but I think under that, 
you know, supervision of those four other players, I think Powers will do just fine. I think if anything, he'll probably outshine some of these players due to the fact that, you know, he's learning from some of the best. You know, you have franchise. I mean, this is a proven winner. This guy's been playing for years and years. He's been playing more than me, longer than me. And uh, I think under his supervision, I think Powers will do just fine. And I think the overall, you know, new team concept with those five guys is is really good. And I definitely see them being better uh, of a team than when they had God plays. No offense to God plays, obviously. Um, but that's it. And the last question I had on that, Juju, for you is now that all dust is settled and we have, you know, Optic under control, Echo Fox under control, obviously Ghost Gaming is doing their own thing. At this point in time, because pretty much most of the teams are full, where could you see God plays, if anyone, picking up God plays? What team can you see him on? It can be somebody who's full, or it could be a team in the making. What's your What's your take on that? Oh, this is actually kind of tough one. Um, I was thinking about this because uh, <clears throat> who right now you can say that's in bad shape as a team that would need a roster change? Well, I have one, so I don't know if you need that help. Um, yeah, I think I would because it, it, it all depends. It's, uh, are they looking for Flash or are they looking for uh, more of a, a role player? Because I feel like you can get that out of God plays because you've played with him. Mm -hmm. You know, you tell him what to do. He listens well. You know what I'm saying? It may go, may drift off sometime. Anybody has that problem. Of but course. It's uh, just overall, overall raw skill. I think he's great. And uh, I, I feel like uh, I don't know. That really is. That's a tough one. <laughs> I, have, could even, I have one okay, team in me, mind. Tell me, yeah, tell me. You tell me, Dan. So the oh, one I'll team be. that I've been rumored to be told, and he's played with two of the team, two of those players already, is Rise Nation. You know, you have Drix, and now you have Keem on the same team, and both those guys also teamed with God Plays before. That's a team. I don't know what your take on that was. Yeah, I know they all teamed before. That's the the crazy part about this. Uh, um. Hmm. I feel like he can fit with Rise, but who would he replace? That's the big thing. That's my thing. So Rise is Zerpting, Keem, Drix, Mortifies, and God, who's that fifth? Uh, Chad, if you guys know the fifth for... There we go. Uh, huh. Forget. I, I forget who that fifth phone. is. Bad is that. So it's Strix, Keem, Mortifies. Uh, I said Keem, Julio. Who else? It's mm -hmm. Keem, Drix. Keem, Drix, Mortify, Vexies. And, oh, um, Vexy. There you go. Boom. Thank you, guys. Thank you, chat of Vexies. So after hearing that, Juju, who would you see get the boot? I already have my answer. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. This is tough. I already know. I already know. Actually. Ooh. Okay, this is what I'm going to say. I say put Kaid in place for Zerpton, but have Zerpton play for somebody else. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's the issue. Uh, I know some people are saying Zerpting in the chat, which I found surprised. Surprisingly, uh, I personally think Mortifies. Um, See my boy Morty. Yeah, Morty do work, man. Let me let me hear it. Let me hear it. I want to hear it. I, think, I love it. I think it has to be Morty, and the only reason why I say Morty is because again, you don't want to split Keem and Drix. Obviously, they just added Keem. I personally think Drix is actually really good when he when he gets settled in and he's playing his game. Drix is now. Nah, you know what? You know, let ahead. me tell you something about Drix because y'all three, <laughs> I came up, I came, I came up playing with Drix and uh, Frank. Shout out to my boys, my brothers. Um, at Vegas, this past Vegas, I watched Drix single handedly help them win. Four rounds in a row and yeah. come back from a from a, a, a six two. I swear to God, I'm standing right there. I'm like, who's still playing? They like rise, and I I think it was I forget who they was playing, but uh, I know Drix won four one v. Oh, they, they were playing on Impact, not Impact. Uh, Force Blitz. They were playing on Force Blitz. He was playing a one v at the Incinerator, and uh, he won that one v every round. He won a two v one, and then he won three one v's. 
and he helped them. by them by him winning them one v's that changed everything on the map it really did because now you know you up in numbers you know now people can collapse and things like that mm-hmm. so it was, it was it was pretty wild to to just see like him work like that and i'm like i'm like that's i'm like that's the tricks i know you know, because for a while people said he fell off and he's not that good of a player and he's a he's a support player and it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. But you need players like him that's going to step up if other players aren't. Because you have other skilled players on that team. You expect Zert in the drop 25 to 30. You expect Avexis to be right behind him with another 20, 25. You know what I mean? Like, these are just average numbers for what they do. I've seen Keem play. I think Keem is a good player. I think, But I think he's more of a, a support player, too. I really do. Yeah, I can I could agree with that. What came? He's a, a support slayer, if that's what you want to say. He's good with some power weapons, and I feel like uh, he's the guy that uh, if we were scrimming, I feel like sometimes they try to pick either him off or Drake's off, like how they do me, like because people are like oh we're playing Juju and try to pick me off, and you know you know how they do. Some players think that just they just far beyond out can outskill you. I don't think. Keem is lacking in skill. I feel like uh, he don't play fast enough. If that makes sense. Mm, yeah, that's my thing. I don't think I just don't think he play fast enough. That's all. Like I he can rotate can well, he can call out well. Just he needs to play faster, because that's how the game is played right now. It's, it's a lot faster than what it used to be. The meta is totally different from last season and other past events. So many updates and things like that. So. I agree. Um, that well, while you were talking, Juju, a lot of people were saying. You know, both Morty and Zerpting, and people say that Morty is more disciplined than Zerpting. Um, I don't know too much about that team, to be honest, and even Morty. I only said Morty due to the fact that Morty, I guess you could say, and you know how it goes, isn't as big name-wise as these other guys currently on the team. But apparently, most people were saying Zerpting. Um, I just thought Zerpting, one, was skilled, and two, maybe having him and God plays on the same team you know, might be a little too much of a, of a fast team, maybe. Maybe having Morty a little bit slower of a player alongside Cobb plays might be a better matchup, maybe. Yeah, might be. I see what you're saying, like, as far as, like, a spedding out, things like that. Might be, might could become a little shaky because it's like, uh, at times you need, you do need to sped out, but too much, too much of it, you just know it's not healthy for the team because there's so much going on at that point. Agreed. Like you don't have you don't have full awareness of every situation. That don't make sense. No, it's true. And some and some people ask like, what does that mean? And I was like, well, say if it's a boom and an bar down, you got two people in your team that can spread out really well, but it causes so much chaos. Oh, I'm fighting when I'm running. I'm going back. I'm fighting another <laughs> one. He's hurt. He's you know what I mean. Like and then you got another player that's doing the exact same thing right behind him. I'm shooting for you. He's coming. It's gonna hit you. And it's like you know you bump heads because you're playing for him, but you're playing for him, and it's, you know there's no specifics at that point. So. Now, uh, but I really, Juju, did you want to call me back? I know you said you were going to yeah, call I'm, back. Yeah, I'm going to call you back. Yeah, definitely going to call you back. I'm going to call right. you right back. Cool. Give me one second. All right, guys, just give me one second. Juju is going to go ahead and call me right back. Uh, trying to get some video on here. I know we have one or two more topics with him. All right. There he is. There's Juju. There we go. What up, what up, what up? What up, buddy? cleaner a lot cleaner all right guys so now you can see juju that is juju right there obviously most of you people in here i can see the chat or who's in the chat a uh, bunch of familiar names but this is him twitch hey, man i'm having some technical difficulties with my laptop but we gonna be straight man <laughs> so dashies while you were trying to fix your camera uh juju said we have a scrim <laughs> being head ass Yo, uh-huh. coming uh-huh. at him. <laughs> Definitely, that's what he's doing. They love doing that. I love them guys too. Um, also, I will be competing. I'm competing with my boys, man. Um, you know, being a free agent in the the gal community is so so dangerous. It's like it's like free agency after coming off winning a championship, you know. And it's like, <laughs> dude, I just won a championship and now I'm a free agent. Like, how does this make sense? You know what I mean? Like, after, after, everybody after they come from an event believes that they're the best. I, I promise the guys. Yes, yes. Once, once you get on Twitter, it's like, I dropped a 50 bomb. I dropped 40. Mm-hmm. But let me ask you this. Did you win? Uh, That's the big thing. Some people that. can't say they win. Like, like, don't get me wrong. You can body a kid 90 times. You can drop one kill 
and win. It, can't nobody take nothing from you because you have a W. You see what I'm saying? Like that that 40 means nothing when you lose. Like That's when true. people were saying like uh oh James Harden was dropping 30 and 40 and they're still losing. Okay. That's fine. He, he's still the best. How's he one of the best? <laughs> I mean, he's not the best technically because he's losing. You know what I mean? Your 40 is non-existent with the L. Like it should never come upon a time to where you do that great and you take L. That means you're playing for self instead of playing for a team. I, think, but I mean, hey. That's a good, I mean, that's, if you're, if you're keeping it real, that's the way it goes. If you don't have that W, there's really, you could be the best in your own mind, but you didn't get the W, plain and simple. Yeah, like, it's crazy. I've seen it so many times, and my thing is, um, going into this event, I want to play with my um, my guys. Like, I should have been playing with my homies a while ago, because I have fun playing the game with them. And that was my big thing, too. Like I said earlier, if you don't have fun playing this game, you're not going to succeed. No matter how good you are, if you're really not enjoying the game, there's no point of you being on the game because it's like I'm just shooting the shoe. This is a regular habit of mine. It's not fun anymore. It becomes lackluster. Then you lose interest, and you know how I go after that. So. Sure. Yeah. Now, the last but, topic, Juju, before I get before I get you going, the last topic I wanted to talk about, and I totally forgot about it, honestly. I was just going through my list. Uh, Game Battles Tournaments is now back for Gears of War. I'm not sure if you've been able to indulge in it, but I don't know if you've noticed, but we pretty much have a tournament every day now during the week, and I think maybe during the weekend, uh, on Game Battles in regards to Gears of War, anywhere from singles to 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, 5v5. What's your take on that if you've started about it or if you even knew? To be honest, this is this is very exciting. I've been waiting for this to come back for a while. Um, players, so you want to sign up? You want to play something different? I see I see everybody on Twitter when I'm at work complaining about um, there's there's nothing different for competitive. Well, all the execution players, now's your chance to play. All of the, the escalation players, you want to come out and show some talent? Come and beat these pros in these execution tournaments. You might learn something. You you know, you might take some away from their gameplay. Anything. This is to to get people back in the like I said, in the spirit of playing. You know, you want to be known as if I beat you so many times. Like uh I can say like in Gal three, online matter. I don't care what nobody say. Online online matter because we rarely had events. So let's throw that out there. We knew who the winners were, things like that. But if you were really dominant online, this it made a difference. And in this game, if you dominate online, it might get transition to land. You never know. It's all about what you do, though. So for those players that want to get out and do something different, hey, they have having tournaments now. Get out there and play, man. It's no excuse. You got something to do now. You say you want some fun, something different. Come and play some execution. You might run into me and my boys. Mm-hmm. You never know. You know what I mean? So, hey, let's get it done, man. We need more, we need more fun in the community in general. Like, we really do. And I, I really hope, like... I hope that we take advantage of the opportunities and resources that we have because they don't have to run those tournaments, you know, so you see. I think you've said it well enough already as it is. Um, that is true. Obviously, it's great to have these game battle tournaments back. I think it's an awesome idea. It gives us a little bit, you know, something more than just scrimming. It's a lot more competitive, even if you're doing 2v2s, you're doing 5v5, 4v4, like you said, execution as well. I think it's an awesome idea, and we just need people to play. That's kind of why I wanted to talk about it, because people told me to talk about it. Um, we just need players to continue to play. You know, it's only a couple of dollars here and there, but of course, you could win some money in, in return. And uh, it's come and gone in the past, and it's all because of attendance. We obviously I haven't had the best attendance, but I think now when they're pumping out a tournament every day or multiple tournaments a day, I think now it's a little bit easier to get players to fill those gaps. Uh, the one issue, and I wanted to ask you about it, Juju, because I know Colin, who's here from Canada, uh, one big thing that's a problem is that a lot of people outside of, I guess you could say the United States to make it easier to understand for most people, is that Canada and even other countries can't compete in these tournaments. I personally am not 100% sure why but is that something that you would like to see? Oh, of course. I, I I would love to see that. Definitely love to see it. Um, I want to see some players from Fable compete in some execution tournaments. I remember talking 
with a few of them um, <clears throat> after Vegas last event that they said uh, some of them came up play execution. You know what I mean? And uh, some players might complain about connection and we have to play on their host and things like that. I mean, you find some leeway to work it out in the middle. I feel like that's the biggest issue, but this is going to be exciting. Yeah, they really just need to open in them doors and just allow those players to play. You're leaving off a branch of the community. That's like a, that's like putting a, uh, putting a lot of varsity teams in one room and then you have junior varsity teams in another room and you like only the the varsity can play right now and then like we'll throw something for junior varsity at a different time but it's like a i guess you can say like a camp you know what i mean like allow everybody to play if you want to look at it that way well, the more players the more exciting it'll be for a fact yeah he says that they don't have top competitors over there look what fable did man i don't care what about i watched that live can't take that from me. I watched them live, bang with the best. You know what I mean? My favorite player is Marsh. Shout out to Marsh. On um, 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 Fable, do your thing, bro. Keep working. But um, yeah, man, just open it up to different players. I don't think that's fair. It's not. Where I live should make a difference if I'm beating you or not. I could be in some hole in the dirt with a TV and a Wi-Fi box and an Xbox and I beat you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it really don't matter. What, like, where are you from? It shouldn't mean anything. Connection issues, I think it'll be figured out sooner or later. But, hey, who knows? Yeah, I think that, that happens to be the issue. Um, and, again, I'm speaking – this is me just personally. Um, I'm not sure if it's connection. Like you said, Juju, that was one that I didn't even think about. Maybe connection issues, uh, payment issue I think might be another reason why. Maybe the payment system doesn't work that way. Yeah, true. Maybe it's like the, the, the currency to exchange. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe something like that. Um, obviously, if it was easier to do for you, Colin, like I said, Colin and also Leap, one of my former teammates, Leap from Canada as well, also a former teammate of Colin, uh, both from Canada. If it was easier, I'm sure it would have been done by now, maybe, you know, depending on what it is. But I think just like anybody else knows and a businessman, without a doubt, would understand the more numbers, the more people, the more money involved. So I think that's definitely something. And like I said, guys, if, if you ever want to get something across, you, you got to make it known. You got to go public with it, you know, contact the right people, game battles, whatever it is. But I think regardless, we're going in the right direction. I, I think it's a great direction. Um, but without a doubt, if you guys are watching this live or pre-recorded, do continue to sign up. Do continue to play. It's definitely a lot more practice than a scrim unless you're scrimming like optic gaming or ghost gaming and they're at 100 percent you know they're not fooling around uh but i definitely think a paid tournament will get you more competition oh that's grimwood i think you could agree right juju yeah hey i'm gonna I'm say this for one thing because i'm in the chat if you got money to play wages go sign up man just go 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 instead of spending 10 go spend two bucks to go play in the uh online tournament bro you get five opportunities at two dollars a pop bro get your money's worth you don't win the first time, you get four more tries. Just like going to the arcade machine, bro. It's true. Um, I think that's all I have for you tonight, Juju. Um, thank you again for being on here, guys. Of course, bro. If you haven't yet, it. follow Juju. Uh, but Juju, before I let you off, brother, anything else that you had for me? Um, I like to say I appreciate you letting me on. You know, shout out to everybody that support me. Shout out to all my friends. Um, shout out to Dashes. Even though you know your mm-hmm. nose longer than your, your everything else on your body, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, nah, man. Um, if you're a competitor and you watching, man, come out to New Orleans and compete. Um, I like to meet everybody. Don't don't base me off what people tell you. I'm actually a good guy. You can ask Cubano himself. He's known me for a while. I'm a really great guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just, gonna say I don't know who said something bad about yeah, you. Yeah, it's a lot of people, man. You'd be surprised. People just don't. People could not like you for breathing a certain way. It, it, it don't make sense. But um, yeah, man, I appreciate you for allowing me to come on the show, talk, hear what I got to say. Um, shout out to all the players that we mentioned today. Keep being great. Uh, keep putting on for the scene. Uh, we need it to grow even more, and we need more players. Pros invite more amateurs to play. <laughs> not a, not not as far as like. Inviting them to personally teach them, but make the community more inviting. I'm tired of seeing the same players. The reason I'm saying this is because you guys say you want more money, you want more tournaments. Well, guess what? We need more people first. Our community is welcoming, but I feel like you have to get kicked the trip in order to get 
you know, put into the community first, which it should not be that way. So please make it more invite. Play some ranked. Host a, a all amateur tourney. Stream it. Do you can give it's so many ways to give back. Stop being lazy too. I see how you're talking about how how great you guys are living and what you're doing. You got all this type of resources and you you on this big of a platform. Use your resources and give back then. Show me that you're really about it. That they're not just giving you a check just to give you a check. <laughs> For real. Some things don't require money. Um, that's all I'm saying. But I mean, sure. hey, what do I know? Hey. To everybody out there on Gears, enjoy. Juju, you couldn't have said it any better. I think everyone's appreciated your realness in the chat, which I love. Like I said, I mean, you didn't disappoint at all tonight. And uh, thank you for being here. Really. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. Shout out to Cubano, man. It's a good guy. Follow him on Twitter, man. At NJ Cubano, man. Go follow Gal Rostamania. Go follow the show. Make sure y'all hit the follow button in the corner, man. That's don't what don't I be say. afraid to do it. Definitely. Don't, make sure you hit that button. Don't be afraid. Guys, this is Juju. He keeps it real. Guys, like I said, at J Beans, two N's, two S's. Juju, it's been real, brother. Enjoy your scrims or whatever it is that you're up to next. You gotta go scrim, bro. <laughs> but uh, good luck, and I uh, hope it goes well, and I hope you do well at New Orleans. Oh, definitely. Thank you. I'm out. Later, Juju. Peace. All right, guys. Well, like I said already, that was Juju J Beans. That's two N's, two S's. For everyone that doesn't know or that doesn't already follow Juju. Now, this is the part of the show that uh, is going to get pretty interesting. I know this was the part that I wanted to talk about probably the most tonight. And uh, it's something that <clears throat> kind of annoyed me. And uh, I was hoping that everybody would be in here watch this. Uh, to think, I think it's, uh, it's about time I talk about it, only due to the fact that uh, it's, fine. it's hard to find words to talk about it. But uh, as you guys all know, you see the topic board. I don't want to repeat it again. But uh, I think a time that I call a timeout. Now, the only reason why I call a timeout is because there's been a lot of hypocrisy uh, lately in regards to Gears of War world. And uh, I'm the last guy to uh to stay quiet you know i i do have pride and uh my pride is coming out especially now and uh, i wanted to save this last part uh for the last part of the show uh due to the fact that you know you shouldn't just go around saying things and you shouldn't you know preach things and not practice necessarily what you're preaching and uh, unfortunately in our uh, i guess world or our community you have somebody who's at a very top level currently and uh, that person, you know, made a comment that's going to follow him and it's going to follow me. Uh, that's kind of why I don't necessarily have respect for him. And, uh, he, you know, he did it to himself. Not once have I ever disrespected this man. And, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, I mean, let me let me just uh, let me just put it out there. OK, so this whole stem from today, I jumped on to watch the uh, Gears All Esports Access. Okay, that's great. I always usually watch to kind of keep updated on, you know, who's coming on or what's going on. You know, I know today they talked about the whole coaching thing. That's, you know, that's great. You know, I've talked up Ryan Fools before. I've talked up Fatal Strike before. Uh, but my issue was, and kind of where I drew a line was that it was announced and it's not necessarily about that guys but uh, i'll bring it up was it was officially announced on the show that otf okay you guys know what the otf is i don't really care to explain but otf was announced as i guess you could say the, the post show post game show or you know gears or whatever it is now okay i get it you know you're investing in somebody that's on payroll that's great i get that talking to a businessman Probably better than most of the people behind the scenes. Now, okay, you're investing in somebody that you pay. Great. You know, you make an officially announcement uh, on the show saying that, you know, this guy is, is basically your post-game show guy. Okay, I keep repeating myself. Sorry. And uh, that, 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 that hit me. I was like, man, I just had gotten an email, I would say, like two or three weeks ago which I responded to and never got an answer back. That's a whole nother story. So I won't even bring that up. Um, but I had just gotten an email when I had emailed um, 
I don't want to give up too much information, but I emailed somebody and I got back an email and it was an email that I didn't necessarily like, you know, I, I don't like mis mixed messages and I don't like things being said indirectly. If, if you're, if, you know, if, if you're in the business, if you're a respectable person and you're professional, you know, you want to be as clear and precise as you can. And, uh, I got this email a couple of weeks ago that said, you know, you have to focus on, you know, being professional and, you know, we do watch your show and we know what your show's about and we know the topics you talk about and certain things, blah, 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 all nonsense realistically. And then I see that your post game show is a show that, that isn't necessarily professional, that you have a lot of cursing. You have a lot of degrading people, especially pro players. You have a show that you attack people personally. And then and then you have the guts to email me about professionalism. Hmm. And you thought I wouldn't say anything? That's what I'm confused about. I mean, you people should know me better by now. And it was interesting because I'm like, oh, I guess we're going to do that. And uh, out of nowhere, you know, I decided, you know what? I think it's time to uh to bring it up because i did go officially to the company and uh, i brought up what was said about me multiple times not just once obviously i only have it once for you guys tonight but uh it was brought up to my attention that this guy you guys all know who this guy is i don't have to go further into it but it, it clearly states there and again I, I don't necessarily know what's wrong with being mexican kind of confused actually if NJ Mexican gets more viewers than us, I'm retiring on the flank. Why do you have to call me Mexican? My name is clearly NJ Cubano. And my question was, what's the problem with being Mexican? I don't, I don't really know. I know a lot of Mexican friends. And, I mean, if, just like anybody else, we're all human beings in the end. We all came from a certain place. We all came from different countries. You know, we're all individuals in our own way. And we're all unique in our own way. And I went personally to the coalition about this. And, uh, you know, the complaint was taken, you know, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, I was, I was told to look into it. Did anything ever happen? No. I didn't even get a follow-up. I didn't get anything. And the whole reason why I did this is out of principle. Before this even came out, or after this actually, sorry, before this actually came out, this screenshot, you had Veli attack two different pro players on similar things that were said and you attack them personally on your show and on social media but you're not practicing what you preach and my issue was is that the guy didn't even get reprimanded I didn't even get any messages back I didn't get anything back I didn't get told oh we'll take care of it oh yeah that's not something he should be saying it was swept under the rug God forbid somebody else said this forget about it you could lose your job you could lose plenty of things for this. I mean, look at look at Roseanne. I mean, if we're all thinking about it, if we're all talking about it, Roseanne, she got fired from a show, a big time show, for making a very, very stupid remark that nobody would agree with. And if you agree with, you have a problem and you should probably have it checked out. Now, I wanted to talk about this because like I said, I get an email from corporate, from a corporate company telling me basically, I mean, not that they didn't say it wasn't professional, but basically along the lines of try to be professional, try to do this for your show, try to do this. I, I, I don't know. I think since I started my show, I've been nothing but professional. And people on LinkedIn that watch my show, people that are probably bigger than the guy I was emailing, never told me I had any issues. And if I did have an issue, uh, I think you should... Tell me, you know, I'm always open to criticism. I'm always open to, uh, you know, being talked to. You know, if there's an issue, you can come to me. Probably one of the most realest people you'll meet. Uh, you may not believe that, but the people that know me know that. If you have an issue, just call me. Just give me a call, text me, and uh, we'll talk about it. And that's kind of what I did with the person that emailed me. I said, hey, if it's easier, you could call me, you could email me. I gave him my personal line, anything. You think anything happened? You think I got a response? Nothing. I didn't get anything. And then for the one second, split minute or two that I jumped on the show tonight, I go in here, this guy is your official post-game show guy. 
my heart. My heart stopped. Because I'm like, what? Somebody just got fired for this. Yeah? And in the end, like I said, what's the, what's the problem with being Mexican? I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I, I mean, it's like, look at our half of, pretty much half of our communities from Latin America. I just had one of my guests, Chris, Chris Fected. She's Mexican. She lives in Mexico. She's big in esports out there for Red Bull. You think she would appreciate this? You think the Mexican players would appreciate this? You know, it clearly states what my name is. That was my whole, that was my whole issue. Is it clearly states that I'm Cuban. So you, you not only went out of your way to tweet that, but you also insinuated that I was Mexican. When my name clearly says NJ Cubano all over Twitter. You know, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke. And I clearly lost respect for this guy. I have, to be honest. And I think at this point in time, it doesn't really matter what I say or do, guys. Uh, not that I care. Um, but I highly doubt I get into New Orleans. And to be honest, I'd rather not work with somebody like this. Because uh, my pride would get in the way. I know my pride would get in the way. Because uh, somebody like this, he doesn't deserve it. Not somebody like that. And uh, Charlie, to answer your question, yeah, nobody ever got back to me. Nobody ever said anything. And my whole issue with why I brought up this whole thing is because of that email. He didn't send me that poor, poor email with a very indirect message basically saying my show is like TMZ. Like TMZ. How is my show like TMZ? Have you watched the guy's show? Have you watched his show? He bashes people. He bashed two pro players for something similar to what he did. You bash two of them on your show and you try to ruin their reputation on your show. And this is what you this is what you preach? No. Sorry, that's that's not the way it works. That's no. That's it's wild. It, you know, it's not okay. It's it's not okay. Reaper, you see? This is wild. It is a wild. You know? I, I, I just don't get it. That's why I talk about it. And that's, that's what drew me the other, to, to the limit tonight, guys. That, that was it. I literally tuned into the show. I'm watching. I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. Oh, we're talking about Fatal Strike. That's awesome. This and that. And then they drop the fact that this guy is the post-game show for Mixer. This guy? Really? And then to follow that up with that announcement and then the email I got. Are you kidding me? Are you guys running a clown show over there? I don't, I don't understand. I, I really don't get it. Like, what? Confusing. It really is confusing. And I figured it was time to say it, guys. This has been around for a while and I kind of let it go. I let it go. I let it go. Um, I kind of let them do their own thing. Uh, but behind the scenes, you guys don't know. It, it's it's a game, it's like a childish game, and uh, it's just sad. It just annoys me. That that's realistic. Realistically, you know, most of you people know what I do for a living. And if I were to do something like this, this is a big problem. You don't just go around doing that. It's not right. And when he first did this, I'm not gonna lie, I got upset. But you know what I did? I was big about it. I let it go. I think I blocked him. I think this was the day I blocked him. Uh, but I remember taking the screenshot of it. Um, but yeah, I think that was pretty much it about that. I don't want to dwell too much on about that. But that's why I wanted to call a timeout, guys. I think it was uh, about time you guys knew. Uh, and it was just a combination of things, you know. The fact that I get this email, you know, your TMZ, you know, you bring you bring out drama, Intel, and then. This guy is your, your post game show. Like, oh my god! Like, I'm look. I'm I'm happy that I had Juju on the show prior, and that I talked it out, and that we had topics and conversations prior uh, to this whole situation. But enough was enough. I had to bring it out. I mean, not only did this guy say this, but he also, you know, brought up, you know, NJ Mexican. So confused. Uh, I'm still confused. I don't know. I guess there's something wrong with Mexican. Those guys. I guess if you haven't known. Uh, 
I guess it was supposed to be an insult. But I think if, if I'm not mistaken, I think I may have texted him or I think I tweeted to him uh, basically saying, you know, what's the problem with Mexicans? You know, they're just like anybody else. You know, they, they live in America. They live in Mexico. They live anywhere, really. I mean, we, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. And yeah, it could be NJ Mexican. Absolutely. Absolutely, I could be. I'm actually half Ecuadorian. I could be NJ Ecuadorian. But he went out of his way to say NJ Mexican. Come on, dude. You know better. This guy should know better. And I hope this teaches him a lesson, if it even goes anywhere. Uh, but yeah. And I think that's a great, uh, that's a great thing to bring up, guys. Um, here's esports. His is part part Mexican. I guess you could say it's true. Um, I, th I think it's I think it's definitely true that Mexico is a big portion of esports gears. And I love, like I said, I had Chris Fected. I mean, she's a huge part of Mexican esports, and she was on the episode two weeks ago. I actually have it up on uh, on YouTube, and she was awesome. She explained how intense the Mexican culture, the Mexican community is out there for Gears of War. Like, wild. She tried to paint the picture for me, and it just didn't do it justice because I know the Mexicans – and the Mexican community love Gears of War. And that was always been a thing. Since I played this game, it's been a thing. I know the Mexican community is huge. Uh, and the Latin American community, I guess you could say that. It's pretty much how it works. Um, cleaner. Out of curiosity, when was that tweet made? It's irrelevant. Just professional curiosity. So he had made that tweet. Um, I forget when exactly. You're asking for like a date or a... For like a year i know it was i know it was last year early uh late last year sorry late last year and uh i th i think it was like i was going live or something like that or i think it was like the announcement of my of my show or like i think we were kind of going head to head at the same time um same time kind of same um same time same date day kind of thing and i know he took offense to that and that's what he went and tweeted um and I, I I know that's that's when it was done. Um, I know when he did say it cleaner. Um, like I said, I know for sure. I, I didn't say anything because you know he should know better. It's social media. Social media will follow you. Uh, you know, if you don't know that yet, you guys should know that. You know, be careful what you post. You know, it's gonna follow you. It'll always follow you once it's posted. It's not deleted. You can delete it, but the, it stays. Trust me, it stays there. Um, what else? Uh, Gilbert. Yeah, that's my thing. You know, you can't really come after people like that. Um, you know, you can't attack people when you're not necessarily doing the right thing yourself. That's that's what kind of upsets me. That you go out there and you start talking about people like that, and you know, it's not really a good look. You know, if he was a clean guy and he did his thing, I get it. But, yeah, and I agree, Cleaner. I mean, if you don't know by now from Immortal or, or just me in general, you know what I do for a living. You always got to tread lightly when in the public eye, man. You have to. You have to. You have to. You have to. And uh, I knew this was going to come back and bite him in the ass. And, uh, you know, I, I think it was time just because it was just a combination of things. You know, it's, it's upsetting. You, know? you have somebody like me who puts their time, that puts their effort uh, into the show, into you know, giving you guys informative information and talking to uh, to you guys each and every week. You know, what I mean, I enjoy it honestly. I really do enjoy it. Um, it's not like it's not like I, I don't do it, or I do it for like the fame or something like that. You know what I mean? Like I could have plenty of things I could do with my time, um, but you know, it's I don't, I don't know that. I don't know. Gilbert, you're already more successful than any of these immature kids in the community will ever be, bro. He's just a hater. Yeah, that's realistically what it comes down to. Realistically, I never wanted it to go there, honestly. I mean, I'll be honest. I was dodging him for a good bit. And, uh, you know, just because I know who he is. He's very arrogant, very disrespectful. Obviously, you can tell he's very disrespectful. Um, and that last announcement tonight kind of pushed me over the edge. Post-game show host on, on the flank. 
on Mixer, a Microsoft company, promoting this? Hello? This is... That, that, I don't know. That, that, that pushed me over the edge. Granted, I didn't have the greatest day today. Um, so I think that kind of played a role into it. But uh, after I heard that, I was like, nah, this can't happen. This isn't real life. Especially after that email I received. No way. No way. I can't do it. I can't. I couldn't stay quiet anymore. And uh, somebody like that, a hypocrite, no. That doesn't fly well with me. I think that was something that needed to be said. And it, it's a lot of like, a, what can I say, a lot of pressure let off. Uh, it was a lot to kind of hold on to that. I've been holding on to that for a good bit. And uh, I thought enough was enough. Because, yeah, I mean, whatever. No, nothing was ever done. I did go to the uh, the coalition of Microsoft, whoever you want to say officially. I did, and nothing happened. Nothing was said. Nothing was done. There was no, no follow-up with me. Um, and like I said, for everyone that's just joining, I had received an email talking about you know what? Let me go ahead and pull that email up. I'm not going to uh, give you guys a screenshot of that, but uh, guys, I like a breakdown. Let's see. Let's see where this uh, Wrong email account, so I'll, I'll kind of give you guys some of this. Ah, here it is. Perfect. This is a perfect email I wanted to bring up. Um, so the email that I got that kind of started the whole chain reaction to this or kind of led to me, you know, upsetting me because it was kind of like pathetic. This email I got uh, about a month ago to this date, I got this email. And... Uh, um... I got this email and it said, thank you for reaching out. Sorry for the delay. Your email defaulted into my junk folder. Now, that's a problem. Junk folder. I mean, I thought this was supposed to be a legit company. I was kind of confused. Junk folder. That was a problem. That pissed me off immediately. Um, I only found it last night, late last night. Okay, whether that's sure or not, don't really care. Um... Skip that, skip now, we're in the process, skip that. With that being said, however, there are a couple of things you should be aware of and keep in this respect moving forward. Okay, now I hope you sent this to all the talent on there. I'm not even talent, and I was told this. I was basically given a warning uh, through email. It's kind of confusing. I didn't really do anything. Pretty, pretty professional guy. Um... Number one, like most public facing roles, your social media social media presence is taken into account during our review process. I thought your social media your social media presence is taken into account during our review process. I think this counts as social media. Although it's something we're willing to work with, we're expecting those representing the program conduct themselves professionally on social media. This is the best part. Literally the best part. CNN versus TMZ. What? CNN, everybody knows is fake news. If anything, they're like a drama alert. CNN is it's CNN. Everybody knows that. And it was CNN versus TMZ. If that's not insinuating something, I don't know what is. Hello? <sighs> and that was pretty much it. That was sent to me about a month ago after I sent in a polite professional email in regards to, you know, working with Gears, bringing you guys the entertainment uh, that I want to be bringing. And uh, that's the email I got, and that kind of led to the whole thing that pissed me off today. <laughs> You know, you got to practice what you preach. You, you just have to. I, I don't know. I think most people in here, including Cleaner, said, you know, everyone can see you know, in the public eye. There's, there's, 
no hiding. And, uh, you know, I just thought it was funny. You know, how do I get talked to? I get sent an email. When you guys all know my show, I'm not here to bash anybody. You talk to my guests prior. Talk to my guests prior for them to be on the show. I literally say this and this specifically. One, no cursing. Two, be very professional. We're not here to bash people. We're here to be positive. Ask Juju. I know Juju has it in DMs. I could probably even show you, but I won't even go there. I told him, be real, be raw, but be professional. Because you don't know who's watching. You never know who's watching. And that goes with anything. Out in life, when you're at work, when you're at school, when you're in public. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, that's... That's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I don't want to give too much. Cleaner, you're right. That's why I didn't put any any other pictures or anything like that. Uh, that's it for me for pictures wise or screenshots. But um, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about it for uh, a quick recap, guys. And this will be going up on YouTube without a doubt. This is going up on YouTube. Nothing here is secretive. Um, Prince Jojo. Earlier we spoke to Juju Beans, Juju J Beans was on the show and he spoke with me about the topics that you see up on the board. You had Soto's new squad, which is now Toy Soldier, Pell, the Fazio, and now the newest fifth, Terrence, aka Enforce, at Terrence KTA on Twitter. That was their new team. Uh, Domes' new team, Strafey, Neglectant. Frag out and Xenon, aka Pedro, is that new team for Domes? That's a quick recap for those two rosters. Then we also spoke about Godplays. Now, Godplays is a current free agent. Uh, I happened to talk to Godplays earlier for a little bit. It sounded really stressed out. You know, it seems like he has, you know, stuff going on right now. I'm not too sure if he's even in the game, meaning if he's even searching for a team. Is he kind of sitting out right now? Is he kind of waiting for an opportunity to open up for him to be available? And then we also talked about. Uh, Icy. Was Icy a better replacement for Echo Fox? I personally think Icy is a better replacement for Echo Fox only due to the fact of what they need. Uh, I personally think God plays as a savage. I think he's a beast. He's a very, very skilled player. He can talk. He can lead. Um, and I think he would have done really well with Franchise's leadership there. So it was quite the tough move to make there in regards to dropping somebody like God plays. Like who? drops god plays think about that that's tough i i would have personally never thought about dropping god plays maybe here and there a couple of days he had me out of my mind and made me super upset i would have dropped god plays but out of skill the kid's amazing and then we also talked about lastly we talked about the game battles tournaments that have been going on and game battles is huge right now game battles is awesome game battles has been on top of their game uh, they've been dropping out tournaments daily as it is weekly daily whatever you want to call it and they've been doing really well with it they've been doing a really really good job uh pushing out these tournaments and like i said and also juju said they'll only be successful and they'll only continue to be putting out these tournaments if you guys compete in them it really isn't much to play guys and like juju said if you're playing in wagers you're already spending money to play why not play in a game battles tournament you know there's format it's cool it's great and uh, I think that's something huge and something that, you know, we should focus on. I would really, really hate to see them go. You know, I would hate for the Game Battles tournaments to go. Um, so please, guys, if you're doing your job, if you're playing Gears of War, if you're supporting the circuit and you're supporting the new season upcoming, make sure you definitely, definitely sign up for those tournaments. GameBattles.com. Go to Gears of War 4. Tournaments link. And uh, Anything. You could be a singles player, a doubles player, 3v3, 4v4, 5v5, escalation, execution, you name it. They're pumping it out there. Uh, they're doing their job trying to get you guys to, to, you know, to play, to join, to get into the game, which is a, a great job. I think that's something huge. And I think, you know, now us as players, us as the community have to do our job and return to favor. You know, we have to definitely return to favor um, because, like I said already, I would really, really hate to see uh to see them take it back um but without further ado guys i think that is it for me tonight thank you guys for all tuning in you guys have been great you guys are awesome again i don't do this show just for myself i do this show for you guys i do this for the entertainment i do this for the fun of it realistically the end goal of this is to continue my i guess my uh what's this word god this is a good word too my relevance 
in esports and my relevance in Gears of War. I don't see myself competing anytime soon or ever again. Uh, so I do love to do this show. I also do casting and hosting for other games I already have. Uh, so it's kind of like a part-time gig for me at this point. But again, without your guys' support, without your fun, you know, it wouldn't make this as entertaining as it is already. So I appreciate you guys for being here each and every week. Uh, same time, same place. And uh, I think that's it for me tonight, guys. Again, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at NJ Cubano. And make sure you follow me at the top right of your screen. You just press follow right there, NJ Cubano, in the stream. Um, and that's it. I think that's it for me tonight, guys. Again, uh, I'll be live next week. Same time, same place, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I kind of have to figure out the schedule now uh, because I know Veli uh, had his show on tonight at 9, which is fine. That's great. Um, I just would like some more consistency. You know, I don't, I don't want to compete with anybody. That's the thing. I, I've always been about not competing show-wise. So I'm trying to see if I'll be live next Wednesday or next Thursday, same time. Um, you know, I think that's, I'll kind of figure it out from there. But if you guys follow me on Twitter, you'll know exactly what day and what time I'll be on. But again, guys, thank you guys for being here. Have a good night. Thank you for the continued support. Love you. And I'll see you either next Wednesday or next Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And one last thing, I'll have my episode of the whole Icy God Plays fiasco up on YouTube here soon enough. And big thanks to Domes for making me an awesome, awesome thumbnail. Um, for that YouTube video. So I'll have that up on Twitter later today. I'll, I'll definitely have it up maybe by 12 or even earlier than that, depending on the loading. But again, guys, thank you all. I don't want to continue talking. Love you all. Have a good night and uh, good luck. Good luck. Thank you.